with the Knicks for four more years, $117 million. Randall will have a player option in the last year of the deal. That extends his deal through the 25-26 season. I cannot believe those words are coming out of my mouth. The 25-26 season, that's where we are. Randall locked in New York, adding Kemba Walker, as we talked about yesterday, Evan Fournier this week. So, Zach, where do you think the Knicks are in reestablishing themselves as an attractive destination for elite talent? They're getting there, and that's why... All of these signings matter. Everyone got up in arms over the dollars and the years, and the years turned out to be shorter mm -hmm. than was initially reported. The most important thing is staying good, staying competent, staying as an organized team that has a future. And the Knicks, if they do that, are going to attract people. This is a good deal for Julius Randle. Mm -hmm. The cap will go up. His number will not even look that big as the cap goes up and up. Does he have to prove that the jump shooting last season wasn't a fluke? Yeah, but he's a good NBA player. He's a good all-around player. He played better defense than he ever had before. Kemba and Fournier will give them some off-the-dribble juice they didn't have last year when really their offense was either Derrick Rose has a big game or Julius Randle bail us out, bail <laughs> right. us out, bail us out. And he couldn't do it against a really good Hawks team. I love what the Knicks have done this summer. They didn't get a star. It's hard to get stars. Might mm -hmm. take a couple more years. Stars don't become available all the time, but you know they're circling, and the stars are noticing. You know, I, I want to say, I think Kimball Walker is a star. You know, he was a star before he got to Boston, and then he had to take a back seat with injuries and Tatum and Brown. So mm -hmm. this guy needs this uh, refresher role. He needs a new role because if you look at this Knicks team, that's what they were missing. They were missing a dynamic guard. Even though Derek Rose was doing his thing, it's hard for you to have that many injuries at his age and do it for uh, 82 games. So now with Kemba there, they're going to be exciting team to watch because we know Thibodeau is going to do one thing, have them ready to play defense, and that's what you want out of New that, York. And that's the team. thing. Their defensive talent has slipped a little bit, but you know they'll get all the fundamentals right, all the rotations right. right. And Kemba, the ability to hit pull-up threes is yeah. something they didn't really have last year. He can do yep. that. That's going to give Mitchell Robinson and Erlens and Wells some lobs. Like, I, I'm – the East is tough. It's going to be tough for the Knicks to really get up to that four seed again, but they're going to be good. Well, yeah. look, I mean, if you play good team defense, a guy like T Kemba becomes less of a liability, right? And you can sort of make up around him. Robert, I was saying yesterday, I feel like Kemba Walker is additive for them, not just because of what he does on the basketball court, not just because he's such a great locker room presence. Just everyone loves Kemba Walker around the league. But the excitement that's going to be back in the garden, we saw a yes. little bit of it in the second half of last season and, and sort of going toward the playoffs. But the idea of Kemba Walker, native son, at MSG with all those great college performances he yes. had. That's going to remind players around the league, too, of when you were playing and what the Garden was oh, like. Oh, yes, when they had Starberry in the Garden. You know, Ooh. this is one of those things. Kimball Walker is one of those players that the New York Knicks fans would gravitate to because he's that New York playground yeah, type right. of guy. He's won championships in college. He's done all these things that he can do. Now he's bringing that home to display it at a time he really needs it in his career yeah. because – Boston was a bust for him. You know, injuries and not being able to do his thing. But think about it. He put up great numbers in Charlotte. This guy was an all-star. He can get back to the Knicks and doing it. Him and Julius Randle pick and roll action. It's going to be nice. I'm he's, excited for the buzz. He's, he's, your, your rookie year, you played there in the finals. You played in MSG in the finals as a rookie, right? 94? No, my second year. Second year? Yeah. Right. It must have been crazy, right? Oh, you know, Spike Lee, <laughs> Knicks. You, know, you think about it. You got the man Patrick Ewan going against Hakeem Olajuwon. One of the best battles you're ever going to see. And it was just a gritty, grimy, hot, you know, Pat Riley at the helm for the Knicks. Rudy T. <laughs> it, it was great, man. Should have been there. <laughs> I was a teenager watching on TV. There you go. We're going to see if we see a little bit more of that in the months to come. I do want to get over to this coast. Kawhi Leonard, the last superstar free agent available. All has remained eerily quiet with him thus far. Remember, 2019 was crazy. Planes were uh, followed. Fans were gathered. <laughs> there was like the middle of the night, the sort of clumps of people. There was four days of just sort of where is Kawhi going? The rest of the league waiting to make decisions off of what Kai would do. Well, he finally joined the Clippers. Well, we're on day four of free agency of this free agency. There are no planes. There are no flight patterns. People are studying. There is nothing. So, Robert, should the Clippers have any level of concern that Kawhi hasn't signed yet? Or should they feel like, great, he's clearly just not I mean, he's not on a tour, obviously, the way he was in 2019. Yeah, he's not on a tour. But for me, as a, as a Clipper fan, I would be mad at Kawhi because there are a lot of free agents could be sitting back, well, we're going to see what Kawhi is going to do because we might join your franchise. And with him sitting back waiting and trying to see what other guys are getting, see what he wants to do, it's not fair to the organization because the organization went out of his way to give you everything you wanted these past couple of seasons, but now you're putting him in a bad situation. You talk about winning championships and being better. 
you're going to need some pieces because you lost some pieces. But if you don't sign early so people can say, okay, Kawhi is staying put, I can come join him. That's not fair to the organization. You need to come up and step up to the plate just like they stepped up the plate for you. There's no planes. There's no mobs gathered. There's no Instagram sleuthing. There's also no cap space. There's nowhere for Kawhi to just sign right now. Now, could you do a sign-in trade? Sure. What's happening probably, certainly, is that He's just either disengaged, which he's Kawhi, That's Kawhi. or he's mulling, do I do I do a short-term deal? Do I do a two plus one, a one plus one? Do I do the long-term deal? And, the, and whatever he does, he'll do. I don't think there's there's much afoot here, really. So, yeah, I mean, I think we all expect him to re-sign with this team. But, Zach, with the way the mechanics are going forward for the Clippers and the cap and everything else, are the Clippers going to be trying to sort of make a deal like is this possibly more of a negotiation than we realize because there's a point with some guys where it's just like yep you give them everything that they want luca of course has not signed his extension with the mavericks we all know what it's going to be everything they're going to put everything in front of him give him all the money they can give him give him the player option do the whole thing do you think that they are just putting that deal in front of Kawhi and he's just deciding whether he wants something shorter or not? Or do you think that the organization is saying, well, there really isn't anywhere for him to go. Maybe we could get him on a more slightly team-friendly deal. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't do that. I think they're saying, when you get to Kawhi's, the, the stage of his career, the timing of the deals becomes more important, right? Sure. When you're at Luca's stage, it's just, here's all the money, here's everything you can get. I think the Clippers probably said, look, here's the short one, here's the long one, here's the one with the player option, here's all the paper, you and your agent, pick one of the papers, sign it, and get back to us. Right, right. Well, he's Kawhi Leonard, and he certainly <laughs> showed again during these playoffs before he got hurt. That game six he had against Dallas, I was in the building for that. Oh, my. That was an all-time NBA playoff performance. And just reminded everybody, this is what this man can do. Of course, I don't have to tell Masai Ujiri what Kawhi Leonard can do. He saw that story. We're going to start with the Olympics as Team USA rallied from an early 15-point deficit to the Australians behind 23 from U.S. all-time leading scorer Kevin Durant, 20 from Devin Booker. The U.S. found their groove late in the second quarter, going on a 22-0 run, outscored the Australians by 22 in the third quarter alone. So, Robert, what was the most impressive aspect for you of the U.S. rally against Australia? I think it had to be that third quarter because yeah. they come out, you get punched in the mouth to start the game off. Then the mm -hmm. third quarter, you're like, oh, man. Australia's for real. They got NBA players over. They got stars over there. We need to come out. And I think they came out in that third quarter like most true good NBA teams do, and they punched them in the mouth and said, yo, we are the USA. We are the <laughs> team that's going to win gold, so this is what we're going to do. Kevin Durant, take over. Drew Holiday, play some good defense. And that's what the U.S. did. I think it took them a while to learn who's the top dog on this team because when you get a, this much talent together, it's hard to say, you know, I'm going to take a back seat. And I think right. now they're realizing, oh, that guy with number seven on his back, he's pretty damn good. He's Kevin Durant. <laughs> Imagine how awesome you have to be at anything to say, do you know who I am? Mm -hmm. Like, there's like 20 people in the world who can say, do you know who I am? And it's not ridiculous. And he's and he's one of them. Just where would we be without him? You right. know, he's, by, he's the best player in the tournament. Yeah, absolutely. And I am impressed, though, when you mentioned Drew Holiday, right? Devin Booker. You've got guys who played so well despite no break from the finals. I mean, Drew Holiday, I'm, where is this energy coming from? But the tenacity on defense was exceptional, and book was book. Yeah, these guys flew right from the finals to Tokyo. I don't know how many hours it is changed. It's a lot of hours and just suit up, play after a grueling NBA finals. It's super <laughs> impressive. The commit That's a real commitment. Right? I mean, that's, that's not bogus. That's a real commitment. They're playing really well. Drew Holiday's been amazing on both ends of the floor, and Devin Booker is just ready for all of it. He's proven in the last three or four months, whatever you throw at him, he is ready for it. He's a bona fide superstar. We know we always want to compare him to the legend Kobe Bryant, but Booker, is, he's writing his own his book. Oh, he's, you know, he's doing his own path. And the way he can shoot the ball and the way he can control the offense, and the thing that he's learning also in this tournament is how to play defense also, because we know what he can do offense. I think with him, he said, you know what, we had some moments in the, in the playoffs where yeah. they try to exploit me defense. This is the time to work on that yeah. and he's doing everything he's working on his game and he's getting better so this guy right here is going to probably be an MVP next season I mean certainly an all-star coaching staff too you can take advantage of if you're on Team USA right now Pop Steve Kerr there's a bunch of guys over there that are on that staff that can really help a guy say oh learn this learn this and then of course use them against them in the Western Conference. <laughs> I do want to ask, seeing how as you have seven rings, I'm just going to keep saying that. When you finished an NBA Finals, how tired were you? And the fact that these three guys, right, Devin, Drew, Chris Middleton, took a 12-hour flight 
now are on a, I mean, the time change is no joke. Your nighttime yeah. is your day, your daytime is your night, that they're doing this for two or three weeks. It's, it's, it's hard because you got to think about it. Last season was an unprecedented season because mm -hmm. they played every other day. Right. Then you go into the playoffs and now you got this, the summer league game with the USA. And then you think about it. Once they come back, they got what, two or three weeks off before they start yeah, their regular season. Camp. So for me, I knew when the season ended, my body needed rest. I would take a month and a half off. I mean, not even touch a ball, not really? do anything. But these guys jump right into another another league, another sport, uh, well, uh, another um championship yeah. series so it's hard man and it's gonna be tired and grueling so i just hope that they find the proper way during next season to get the amount of rest because they're gonna need it because they want to fight for another championship they're gonna need those guys that are playing for usa i'm tired right. after the nba finals <laughs> right and the only exercise i do is getting on the elliptical like an old man in the hotel <laughs> hey, and hey, i get hey, jet lag I, <laughs> I get jet lag flying out to la right that's a real thing <laughs> So, yes, so it is It is a thing, and I am curious about repercussions on the back on their regular yeah. teams as we go. We'll I, had, I had a conversation with Tony Parker and Mono Ginobili one year. I said, yo, the most important thing is us right now winning the championship. And they didn't play for their team the next year, and we won the championship in 2007 because those guys were fresh. That is really, really interesting. We will see. The other semi last night came down to the wire, but Nicholas Batum's game-sealing block gave France the one-point win over Slovenia, despite Luka having the third triple-double in Olympic history. Slovenia will play Australia for the bronze. Now the U.S. will get a chance to redeem their loss to France in the group stage.